Wow, has the news gone crazy this week or what? I got my NRA hat on. I am a lifetime member. I have been a lifetime member for about seven years now. I'm also an oath keeper. I'm a little upset because we have the district attorney of New York filing charges against NRA. Doesn't want to have them pay fines or anything else. She wants to dissolve them. And I'm going to say that ain't going to happen. First of all, they aren't even out of New York City or New York State. They're located out of Washington, D.C., Virginia area. So she can go fly kite. As Donald Trump said, bring the NRA headquarters down to Florida. We'll take care of you. So that's kind of a weird thing. And now we have Mr. Wheeler out of Portland, Oregon, who is saying, well, these guys that are trying to burn down our city and stuff, no, these guys, they're all they are all criminals. They're criminals. They're trying to commit murder. They, they, they firebombed the police station. They actually made it so that the people that were inside the building couldn't get out of the building and, and, and started fires to try to burn them up, so that becomes murder. Well, you know, they, Mr. Willard didn't think that before. He actually went out and tried to join the protesters, got his ass handed to him, but he went out to join the protesters. So I find it really ironic that that's the way it's playing out. What I also find really ironic, and I shared this on my Facebook page, is that Durham, or a special, in, special prosecutor, an investigator, went in and he has charges against many, many, many of the people. I've shared it on my timeline, including all the different charges and stuff. But what turns out on that is that the Department of Justice and Bill Barr agreed to follow the rules that were already preset for it, which I don't agree with, can't follow those charges against those people until after the election cycle is over with. Well, here's the deal. If you don't vote for President Trump and allow these charges to be put against Brenham, Rice, all the rest of them, McCabe, all of them. If you don't, if you don't vote Trump back into office to let these charges actually play out, and you let somebody like Biden or Clinton or whoever else that plays out on the ticket, I'm pretty sure Biden's going to be too too incoherent to do it. But somebody, and I don't care anybody if it's on that point. It doesn't matter. If you let them come in and take over the White House, the first thing they're going to do is fire Bill Barr. And, and John Durham, as they're going to be fired. And, and if they're fired, they can't press charges. So, if nothing else, this is like a really, really big call back to everybody. It's not about left versus right. It's not about any of that stuff. It's, it's about what is right and what is wrong. What is right and what is wrong. I'm going to tell you right now, what is right? isn't always the best answer. It's kind of like the left is really pushing to pull somebody in that shouldn't probably be there. And the right has their person already in there. Is he the perfect guy for the job? I've seen a lot of things I disagree with with Trump. And I'm not saying just a couple. There's been quite a few things I've seen with Trump that I disagree with. Now, I've met the man. I met him on Forbes Yacht many, many years ago. And back then he was much younger and he had no intentions of running for president. But he did say, I will only run when it gets to the point where I have to. If I feel that America is going to go so far downhill that if I'm not the president, then I have to be the one to run for president. And that's exactly what he did. He held to his T on that one. And that's very important to remember. He, he said, I, I don't want to be president. But then he took the position. Another thing that people don't understand is that Trump isn't getting rich off this. Trump does not accept a single paycheck. Every bit of money that comes to him gets donated back to the VA hospitals. It gets donated here, donated there. He, he gets no money for this. He's not, he's not there to get rich. Everybody says, oh, he's out there to get rich. No, he's not. No, he's not. So he, he moves the summit to, to Mar-a-Lago or whatever, a, a place that he owns. He doesn't personally make money off that. His family makes money off of that, but he personally does it because when he took presidency, he had to dissolve himself away from his own businesses. Yes, his kids took over them businesses. Yes, he will always be taken care of by those kids. 
But that doesn't matter. What matters is where this guy stands on his own personal beliefs and where he stands on where he's at right now. And why I still stand with him. Again, I, he has said some things that really pissed me off. And I know he has with a lot of people. And I can't imagine any time anybody would ever accept anybody saying something that they would automatically just accept as being God-awful truth. It doesn't work that way. Nobody is infallible. Nobody. But in the same respect, you are allowing casinos to be open in Las Vegas, but you're not allowing churches to be open in California, New York, or any other place. Any other place. You can have 500,000 people in your casino, and that's fully acceptable. You're not allowed to even have 50 people in your church. That's totally unacceptable. That is a God-given right. Now, these people that think that all these assemblies of peaceful protesting falls under First Amendment. Yes, it does. And it's that wallet. It probably should and it always probably will. But the minute you allow Black Lives Matter or Antifa, and they're both two of the same. They're, they're Democrat witch dogs. They're out to disrupt your peaceful protest. They're out to say, hey, we know George Floyd died. If you ask 90% of the people that are out protesting right now who George Floyd was, they wouldn't be able to tell you. Oh, he was a black man. He was a saint. No, that man was a criminal. He got a lifelong criminal history. Did he deserve to die? No. Nobody deserves to die. Not at the hands of the police, not at the hands of me or you or anybody else. Simply for the fact of being, it's the wrong place, wrong time. But when he did what he did, he didn't deserve to die for it. There's no doubt about it. And there's a lot of cases where I've watched it where somebody's running away and a police officer shoots them. Holy shit, they're trying to get away from the situation. They don't deserve to get shot. You can always go back and find them. It happens all the time. FBI's most wanted list. How many do we go back and look for? 99.9% .9 of them get caught. So you don't need to shoot him there and then there and say, well, he was going to get away. That's not an excuse. It's not an excuse at all. But in the same respect, they don't deserve to die in the way they are, especially if you're running away. George Floyd didn't have a chance to run away. And all those officers are still there and you're going, hey, well, whatever. We're just going to stand here and we're going to watch and you stand back. Um, no, those officers all deserve to be arrested and charged as well. They become accomplices to murder. Now, we'll go back to the original. George Wheeler, sir, you are a loser. A loser. All right, now we're going to go back into another swing on this one, just because I can. Bill de Blasio. Andrew Cuomo. Both of you guys. You are losers. De Blasio. Setting up Gestapo, New York City-style checkpoints you can't get in you can't get out you can't do this you can't do that if you come in we're going to put you under illegal detainment um yeah that's what the gestapo did in germany they put people in detainment camps you know these are your people you're bitching because everybody left they had the money and cuomo's up there saying well come on back i'll buy you dinner i'll buy you a drink yeah well you know what they aren't going to go back because the first thing that happens when they go back, they got to spend 14 days locked down wherever they lived or wherever they're going to live for that 14-day period where they can't leave. Oh, we'll bring you your medication. We'll bring you your food. Yeah. Oh, that's a special freaking welcome back home, Cotter. Ain't happening. Nobody, should, nobody that leaves New York should ever come back to New York. This is the worst state in the union. It's the worst state in the country. And God forbid, I'm still here four years from now. Straight up. I have every intention to get the hell out. I'm only here because my mother is still alive at 84 years old now, I think she is. 83, 84. God bless her heart. She's still here. When she dies, I leave. That's it. And anybody that thinks that that's a bad reason to stay in New York, don't know my mother. She'd kick my ass if I moved out right now. Y'all can think everything you want to think and think that life goes on and everything's going to be all peachy dory and stuff, but I'll be honest with you, if we don't keep Trump in office, we don't just lose this country, we lose our freedoms. 
and that is the God-given truth. Y'all have a good day.